Good day, good day, good day, good day, learners, good day, everyone. Yes, I welcome you to the lesson of the day. This is English Home Language for Grade 9. Yes, thank you for joining us. And I would like to take the register. If you are there, please text in the chat to tell us that you are here with us today. Can you text hi in the chat to see that you are with us today? Okay, all right, there I see you in the chat. There I see you in the chat, I see you. I see you, thank you so much for joining us today. It's going to be a good lesson. I hope everyone will enjoy it and also learn at the same time. We are here to learn and to, yes, you're here to learn. Yes, you're here to learn. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome everybody, welcome Bugs, Cleo, Max, Mitch, Nosipo. Yes, welcome to the lesson of the day. So remember yesterday we did punctuation. Yes, and even today we are going to continue with other punctuation marks that we didn't cover yesterday. So in today's lesson, we will be learning about these four punctuation marks, the apostrophe, ellipsis, okay, capitalization, which is not <laughs> it is not a punctuation mark, okay, but it is related to punctuation marks, although it is not a punctuation mark by itself, as well as a hyphen. Okay, I hope you know what they are. If you don't, it's okay. By the end of the lesson, you would be knowing what they are and how we use them. Yes, like I've already said in the previous lesson yesterday, we went through the full stop, the comma, the exclamation mark, as well as the question mark. So who did the homework of yesterday? Who did the homework of yesterday? This was yesterday's homework. Who did it? Who did it? Who did it? Let's see. Let's see who did the homework. Let's see who didn't. Okay. Before I get off my chair and Come to your houses and check if you did the homework. <laughs> okay, okay, I hope you did the homework. I know you are good learners. I know that you are enthusiastic learners. You are bright, you are good, and you know that homework is for your own benefit, okay? It is to help you to consolidate what you have learned. Okay, so this, these were the sentences I gave as homework that you had to insert the four punctuation marks that I gave, that we went through in the previous lesson yesterday. Okay, so let me just show you the answers. So you will realize that if you could read these sentences as they are without punctuation marks, they really are frustrating, you know. They really are frustrating, I'm telling you. You will be frustrated to read them. So let us see for ourselves that frustration and let us see how we were supposed to punctuate them. Okay, so there are the answers of the activity. This is how you have to punctuate it. You can take a screenshot and you can compare these answers here with what you have written to see where you went wrong, to see where you got it right. And yeah, it really was a straightforward activity. That is what you had to do. So this is what we had to do. Okay, so yes. Okay, we can move on now to the lesson of today. Yes, today we will be dealing with the apostrophe, ellipsis, capitalization, as well as the hyphen, okay? Yes, remember capitalization is not actually a punctuation mark, but you can really see that they really are closely related, okay? You cannot have one without the other, yes.
okay, you know how difficult it is to make sense or to understand the, a written text without punctuation? Yes, we did discuss that yesterday and I also showed you one example, so let's pass. So you remember this, this quote, I, I also gave it yesterday because you're still on punctuation. So yeah, it was so funny when someone says that if, saying that if they had so much time, they will write a book on punctuation. And I thought that such a book would be very interesting to read. Okay, okay, so we can pass. Let us start with the actual lesson for today. So the first punctuation mark is the apostrophe. So an apostrophe is a punctuation mark that is used for the following, okay? So here I have about four things, four things where the apostrophe is used. The first one is to show possession. The second one is to show a contraction. The third one is to show omission. The fourth one is to mark plurals, okay? Let us go through them one by one, step by step. Okay, so the first one, an apostrophe is used to show possession, which means that we use an apostrophe to show that something belongs to someone or something, okay? Yes, if you want to show that something belongs to someone or that something belongs to something, then we use an apostrophe. There is an example there. For the first example, I said, na lady's mother. Okay, Why, what does this mean? This means that this mother is the mother of na lady. Okay, so it means that this mother, it is the woman who gave birth to na lady. It means that this mother, we can say this mother belongs to Naledi, so to say. So this means that this is Naledi's mother. Okay, and how and how do we see that? We can see that by the apostrophe there. The apostrophe there, and then we the apostrophe there, and then we add the S, the letter S, it shows that this mother, the mother here is for Naledi. So this is the mother of Naledi. So we can simply say Naledi's mother. Remember, if you need clarity on something, or if you have comments, remember, please, please, please ask your question. You can raise your hand in the chat and I'll give you a chance to ask your question, okay? Oh, and also remember that next week we are having our assessment week. So if there is a concept or if there is something that you would love us to do before the assessment week starts next week, please, you can type in the chat, let me know the chapter, let me know the concept, and then we can go through it in the next few days, okay? I can prepare a lesson or lessons on it so that we can be able to be ready for the assessment week so that I can help you to understand everything that which you have not understood so far or some somewhere where you may need clarifications. Okay, another example is the chicken's feathers. Okay, so this means that these feathers, they belong to the chicken. This means that these are the feathers which belong to this chicken. And how, how do we see that? We can see that by the apostrophe, okay? So the apostrophe in these examples, it shows us possession. It shows us that something belongs to someone or something. So it shows us that something belongs to someone and it also shows us that something belongs to something. Like in the second example here, it means that this feather belongs to this chicken. That is why we said the chicken's feathers. Okay, let's go on. So if the word ends with the suffix s, then the apostrophe is added after it. Do you all understand that? So if the word ends with the suffix s, then the, apostro then the apostrophe is added after it. 
and we do not include the S. Okay, let us go back to the previous examples. You realize that here, Naledi is a, Naledi is a person's name and it ends with the letter I. So when we show something which belongs to Naledi, we add the apostrophe and the letter S to show that whatever it is, it belongs to Naledi or it is possessed by Naledi or Naledi owns it. Then for our second example, you see that chicken ends with the letter N. Then to show, to show its possession, then we add the apostrophe and the letter S. Okay, that's why there we said the, the chicken's feathers. Okay, yes. So as we come here, I did say that if the word ends with the suffix S, then the apostrophe, you only add the apostrophe after it. Here's an example there. I said girls', girls', girls clothes. What does this mean? This means that these are the clothes which belongs to the girls. Okay, so you realize that since girls, girls, this is girls, okay, which is the, plur, the plural form of girl. Okay, so here, since it is the plural form of girl and it ends with the suffix s, then we just add the apostrophe at the end. At the end, just after the s, you only add the apostrophe, no, no adding the s here. Okay, so this is girls' clothes. So this is the same as saying the clothes of girls or the clothes which belongs to the girls. Yes, see, so this is how it is. Okay, I see, let's see what we have in the chat. Onkabezi is asking, but say close, close ends with an S, that's true. Meaning that, okay, no Onkabezi. This, uh, re, re, remember Onkabezi, in my example, it is the clothes which belongs to the girls, okay? That is why the apostrophe, it is on the girls because it is the girls who possess, okay? So always remember that the apostrophe, it goes to someone or something who possesses or owns another thing, okay? So in my, in my example here, it is these girls who own the clothes. That is why the apostrophe is on girls and the apostrophe is not on clothes. You understand? The apostrophe is on girls because it shows that whatever it is that which it is owned, it is owned by girls. So in my example here, it is girls' clothes. So it means that these clothes are owned by the girls. Do we all understand? If you need clarity on this, please raise your hand and I can give you a chance to ask a question. Do we all understand this? Okay, that the apostrophe will go to the word of someone or something which owns someone or something. Okay, so in my example here of girls' clothes, these clothes, they belong to the girls. That is why the apostrophe is on girls and not clothes. Okay, so that's why I'm saying girls' clothes. So these are the clothes which belongs to girls. Remember, if you need clarity on something, if you do not understand, if you have a comment, please, 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 you can raise your hand and I'll give you a chance to say something. Then the, another example is happiness, happiness shoes, okay? So you realize that here the apostrophe, I only added the apostrophe on happiness because remember, this is intentional, okay? I put, I, this is intentional. I wrote happiness with a capital letter H to show that this, this happiness is the name of a person. This is the name of a woman, okay? This woman's name is happiness. So we are talking about the shoes which belong to happiness. That is why here I'm saying happiness's shoes. Okay, we have a hand in the chat. Let's hear. Yes, Unkabitsi, hi. Good day, sir. How are you? I'm greeting you. Yes, I'm good. How can I help you today? So your second explanation says if the word ends with an S, then the yes. apostrophe is added. So then also close ends with an S. So, so why can we not put an apostrophe at close? Because it also ends with an S. Okay, the reason why is the reason why is because we okay, remember 
what I said. You only put the apostrophe on the person or the object that owns something. Okay. Remember here I said that an apostrophe is used to show possession. Okay. So by putting it on girls, I am showing that this clothes belongs to the girls. Okay. So so this shows that this clothes belongs to the girls. So it is the girls who owns the clothes. That is why the apostrophe is on girls and not on clothes, okay? So, yes, it is like, okay, let me put it this way. It is like with you, Unkabezi, okay? Let me put you back on. Please unmute and come back, Unkabezi. So, it, it is like with you, Unkabezi, okay? It, it is like with you, okay? You, you have a laptop. So then, when I'm talking about your laptop, I am going to say Unkabezi's laptop. Yes, okay, I understand show, that yes, part. Yes, to show that that laptop belongs to Onkaveti. To show that it is Onkaveti who owns the laptop. Okay, so in, in this example of girls' shoes, the apostrophe is on girls because it is the girls who owns the clothes. Okay, sir. Okay, so, okay, you can put it in a sentence and say this, all the girls' clothes are at room number two. You know? So what does this mean? This means that if you go to room number two, then we will find all the clothes which belongs to the girls. Okay, are you okay? Are you, are you sorted now? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. I'm glad now you understand. So yes, that is how it is. Remember, you put the apostrophe on the owner, okay? Whoever owns something or whoever owns someone, the apostrophe goes to him or her. The apostrophe goes to it. Okay, so even I, right now, I have my own laptop. So you will say the teacher's laptop because this laptop is owned by me, the teacher. It is myself as the teacher who owns the laptop. Okay, thank you so much. And then the second example, we said happiness's shoes. Okay, so you realize that happiness is the name of a person. Even I, myself, I personally know happiness. Yes, so anyway, happiness is the name of a person, right? That's why I wrote it in a capital letter each day. So happiness is the name of a person. Then I added an apostrophe there. And, I, and then I added an apostrophe there to show that these shoes are owned by happiness. Are we all together on apostrophe? How it shows possession before we move to the, the second function of an apostrophe? Because the thing with apostrophe, like I've said, it has four uses, okay? So this is the first one. I want to make sure that you understand the first use before we go to the second one. All right, I see many, many yeses in the chat. So let's go to the second use of an apostrophe. So an apostrophe is also used to show contraction, okay? So you realize that this contraction comes from the word contract, okay? Which means to combine two words to form a single word. So here we are contracting, is contraction, which means that we are taking, yes, it is like the same contraction that we should learn in natural science, you know, when they say that when something burns, it, okay, when they say it contracts, it means that whatever contracts, its sizes reduces, you know, it means that it becomes smaller. So here we also use an apostrophe to combine two words to form a single word, okay? So can you just, Imagine right now, I say, give me a one letter word, okay? I say, give me a one letter word, and then here you have do not. Do not is two letters, but you can use an apostrophe to combine those two, those two words so that you can get only one. And when you do that, you will have the word don't, which becomes one word, okay? So here, here are some examples. Do not, okay? When we contract do not, or when we combine do and not, we have the word don't. When we contract is not, we have the word isn't. When we contract I, I am, then we have I am. When we contract or when we combine should and not, we have, oh, sorry, this will be, this should be, should not. Sorry about that. So it should not, should, should be, shouldn't. And if it was would not, it will be wouldn't. Okay, I apologize for this mistake. I didn't say it. Okay, so you, so you realize that in all these examples, when we were contracting or combining these words, we will add an apostrophe 
did you see that so don't you can really expand don't and as you expand don't when you write it it will be do not when you expand isn't when you write it it will be is not okay so these ones there are a couple of more and more examples i know you can also share with me in the chat okay for example could have could i have you can combine it from could you know like like this so there is there is a couple a lot of examples for this one and i see even you are sharing some of those examples in the chat thank you so much i'm so glad to see that you understand how an apostrophe is used to show a contraction okay any question on that before we go to the second before we go to the third use of an apostrophe Okay, so let us continue. Number three, you, an apostrophe is used to show omission. Okay. Okay, wait, before we go here, I have an example in the chat. Let's answer it. So we have no Sipo asking us in the chat saying, say, is ain't slang or is one of the examples? Oh, no, ain't, ain't is a slang let me write it ain't is a slang you know you know those people who, who, who in, 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 instead instead of saying i am not keen they can say i ain't keen no do not use ain't ain't is a slang so yes so please let's not take it as an example ain't is a slang okay so let us not take it as an example okay okay thank you so much nasipo for your question Okay, so number three, an apostrophe is used to show omission. So this means that an apostrophe is used to shorten a longer word and to use, okay, so when we shorten a longer word, we use an apostrophe to show that some letters are left out. Okay, unfortunately for this one, I couldn't really find many examples, but if you have an example for this one, please text it in the chat for us. Please text it in the chat for us. Okay, so here you can see from, we have this word cannot. So from this word cannot, then we can say is can't, can't, right? So what does this mean? This means that we have left, which letters did you leave out? We left out this N and the O. So N O was left out. And because this N O was left out, we put an apostrophe instead to show that some letters have been left out. Okay. So another thing is that you only put one apostrophe. Okay. I know here it is two letters which are left out, but it doesn't mean that you put two apostrophes. Okay. Only one apostrophe. So that one apostrophe, it is enough to show us that the letter N and the letter O are missing from can't because they are present in cannot okay we are all together right are we all together with that okay so if there is any other word that we should know that which can that which could be an example for an omission please use the chat to share it okay let us go to the fourth use the last use of an apostrophe so an apostrophe is used to mark plurals of individual characters. Usually this is something that which you will see in your maths, you know, when they will say solve for X, you know, solve for X's, the Y's, you know. So yes, this is what they do. So for example, remember I said in this case, we use the apostrophe to mark the plurals of individual characters, okay? So here I have the capital letter A. So, so if we have many, many a's well how will we write it we will write it as a we write a apostrophe then s okay so in this case this this doesn't show possession of the of the letter a but rather it shows that we have many a's it shows it shows the plural of a i hope i'm making sense if i'm not please raise your hand and then for b 
for B, okay, for an, another example, we have B. So if this is the small letter B, so if we have many of them, then it will be Bs. Okay, as it, it will be Bs as in like many letter Bs. Okay, so it doesn't show possession, remember? It, it doesn't show possession, it only marks plurals, okay? Because, okay, let us go to the first one. Chances are, if you are not going to use a plural, if, okay, if you wanted to show the plural of the letter A, then you do not use the apostrophe, then the meaning will be changed altogether. Because you will read your word as, as, as. You will read it as, as. And as is not a plural of A. Okay, therefore, it is a new thing altogether. It is a new different meaning. Therefore, if you want to mark a plural of an individual character, you use an apostrophe and the letter S. Are we all together? Is anyone having a question? Are we all together? Remember, if you have questions or you need clarity on something, please do not hesitate to raise your hand. Okay, now next to the next punctuation mark, which is the ellipsis. Hmm. I think this is the most interesting of one. Uh, this is where you can get to see what type of phone I'm using. But anyway, that's, that's not a problem. Let us go to the ellipsis. So an ellipsis is three dots, as you can see them. You can count them as one, two, three. Yes, correct. Also here, one, two, three. Okay, so you should always remember an ellipsis is three dots. Okay, ellipsis is three dots. One dot is a full stop. Two dots, I don't know. Okay, oh. one dot is a full stop. Two dots is two full stops, but three dots is not three full stops, but three dots is an ellipsis. Okay, okay. So, Three dots is an ellipsis. So an ellipsis shows that a word, sentence, or a whole section has been left out intentionally or due to space constraints. I know you are people who are always on social media. You have seen the ellipsis um, on, some, on some notification. There's an example there, the notification panel on your smartphone. You will see many ellipses there, okay? You will see many ellipses there in the notification panel in your smartphone. Okay, so yes, a notification panel on your smartphone is an example for that. So I took a screenshot there, you know, yes, I was on Google, you know, yes, and this is what I got, okay? Yeah, I was, I was on Google and this is what I got. So if, if you could look at, can you all see the cursor of my mouse, my mouse cursor where it is, where there is a picture of school children in, uh, what's that color? Light blue or cyan, cyan skirts, yes. There's my cursor there. So, okay, let us look at this one here where it says live. Live basic education minister in Jimo Tsekha announces back to, you see, the three dots there, what do they show? It shows that there is something that which is omitted. It shows that this headline, it is not complete, okay? Therefore, it has been cut because of space constraints. Okay, like as I have already mentioned here, that an ellipsis, it shows that a word, a sentence, or a whole section has been left out intentionally or because of space constraints. Okay, so you can see even here, it's live basic education minister in Jamaica announces back to, you know, then one, two, three dots, that is an ellipsis there to show that because, I mean, you, you can see that this space is small, okay, because this is a headline, this space is too small for a headline, therefore, they had to use an ellipsis. Unlike here on top, you see here on top, it says, Kemarush. I'm a better bowler now and it's time to reap the rewards. So you realize that here the headline is complete. So there was no use to use an ellipsis there. But here they had to use an ellipsis because this is not, this is not complete. Okay. It, it had to be some, some parts of this had to be left out because of space constraints. And when we continue to read basic education minister in Jumotera is expected, you see, you know that that way there has to be expected. Expected and the word expected is not is not 
uh, uh, you can see that the the word expected there it doesn't have okay it is not complete therefore that is why an ellipsis is used there okay to show that there is more coming but it couldn't fit here okay yes A interesting example isn't it okay so an ellipsis also shows an unfinished thought which the reader can usually guess at okay for example uh, for example for example if imagine if you can t if you can get this text on your social media or this sms wash your hands regularly with soap and water or else okay so if i can text you that you you already know the else i'm i'm i am implying okay i do not have to write i do not have to write why you know you know why i'm you know why i'm telling you to wash your hands regularly with soap or, and water or else okay so yeah so if i if you could get that text you yourself you can really guess you as the reader you can guess where this thought is going to end so that is why we use an ellipsis okay so so the use of of an ellipsis it is when you really try to get people to to really drag your train of thought to really continue with the train with your train of thought without being explicit without being out there okay okay the next one is capitalization although remember it is not a punctuation mark okay but it has something to do with punctuation so capitalization occurs when a capital letter is used on a word okay so when you use a capital letter in a word that we call that capitalization there's an example there happiness okay you see the the letter h is written with a capital letter so capital letters are used to start a sentence that is at the beginning that is capital letters are used to start a sentence or you will find a capital letter at the beginning of a sentence okay there's an example there which which is the first letter of this sentence the first word of this sentence is my and the the first letter is m so you realize that the m there i wrote it in capital letter m thank you And then again, capital letters are used for proper nouns. Remember, we did proper nouns a few days back. What did I say? We said that proper nouns are the nouns which refer to a particular person, a particular thing, a particular place, particular animal. No, oh, sorry. Yes, a, a particular person or a particular place. Then that is a proper noun. Okay proper that is what we call a proper noun okay so for example south africa why did i write it in capital letters because south africa is the name of a particular country south africa is the name of a particular country therefore we use a, therefore we write it in capital letters and you can also see even in this example my name is jackie i wrote the letter j in capital letters because jackie is a name of a particular person okay okay so I think capitalization is straightforward enough, but if it happens that you do not understand, please do not hesitate to ask. Remember, we are here to learn and there's no such thing as a stupid question, okay? We are here to learn. If we, are not, if we, if we knew everything, we wouldn't be here, okay? So we are here to learn. Therefore, make sure that before this lesson ends, you have learned something. So if you need clarity on something so far, or there is something that we should do not understand, please 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 remember to ask your question so this is the story with capitalization oh and you realize again that capitalization we also use it with acronyms okay do you remember when we did abbreviations yes um we, we also use we also use capitalization with acronyms okay let us say for example okay let me let me write this in the chat so so for example, we have, um, let's say, okay, let's say for example, we have, let's say for example, we have eight, okay? I just texted, I just typed it in the chat. The reason why I am, the reason why I am texting eight is because if, if you write it in capital letters, then we will recognize it as an acronym for acquired immune deficiency virus okay but if you can write it with small letters 
it means something else, okay? So if you write it in small letters, it means something that we, sh we use to help. So when you say AIDS with small letters, that means help, okay? That means helps or types of helps or types of assistances or assistance, okay? So you, so then, so then you will realize that it is very important, even with your acronyms, make sure that we should use, make sure that you use capital letters so that we know that they are acronyms. Okay, so this is how it is, okay? This is how it is, this is how it is. So yeah, remember every time that you write an acronym, remember what are acronyms? Acronyms are the words that which we get by, by using the first letters of words, okay? AIDS is an example, okay? So because AIDS is an acronym for acquired immune deficiency virus. So A is for acquired, D, I for immune, D for deficiency S for syndrome. Okay. So remember every time you you every time you write acronyms, please use capital letters. Okay. Thank you. And another thing with capital letters is also be careful that when you write, do not use capital letters, especially when you write formal things. Okay. Just write, just write, just write properly. Use capital letters to begin a sentence, to start a sentence, and to also uh, write proper nouns, okay? Otherwise, just use small letters. Because another thing is, if it happens that you write a formal letter and you write in capital letters, the thing is, the person who reads your letter will be offended because most people, they take capital letters to mean that you are screaming or you are shouting. So if you text in capital letters, people will be offended, okay? So please do not try it, do not try it, or else you will lose friends, you lose respect of other people, and you may also lose some opportunities simply because you text in capital letters, okay? Never text in capital letters, just use a capital letter at the beginning of a sentence or for proper nouns, okay? Thank you. Right, um, let's continue. So capital letters are also used for proper adjectives. Your English lesson, why? Be English becomes a proper adjective because English is a proper noun. It is the name of a subject. So he, in this context, English describes the lesson. So English becomes our adjective. Yes. Capital letters are used also for the main words in the titles of books and films. Okay. So for example, there I said Toy Story. You see, it's Toy capital T story with the capital letter S. Why? Because this, this is the name of this is the title of a film. I don't know if you know it, but this is the title of a film, Toy Story. Yes. Then capital letters are also used for some abbreviations or acronyms. For example, there is RSA, RSA which means the Republic, the Republic of South Africa. Okay, so if you can write it in small letters as RSA, chances are we, you may, you may really lose marks for that, penalized, whatever might be the case. So the last punctuation mark of the lesson, which is the hyphen, so a hyphen is used to create compound words. So a hyphen is used to create compound words. For example, we have well-behaved, okay? So we have well-behaved. So you realize that um, we, this becomes a compound word because it is the combination of well and behaved, okay? So if you put them together then, it becomes well behaved. Okay, yes. It is like it is like in chemistry. You remember in chemistry, okay, in chemistry in your natural science, they say that when you when you mix two or more chemicals, what you get is a compound. Okay, so let us say, for example, you are mixing, you are mixing um loose tea bags with hot water. What is that? That is tea. So tea then becomes a compound because you have mixed hot water and loose tea bags, okay? So even in this case, we have added, we have combined the word well with the word behaved and we use the hyphen there to match them together and that becomes our compound word. Again, three-dimensional, 
we yes we combine the word three and the word dimensional to get three dimensional so that is also our compound word then again a hyphen also helps us to pronounce words okay yes a hyphen also helps us to pronounce word words for example co operate okay can you imagine if we didn't have this hyphen there chances are you're going to read it as cooperate what is that okay and 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 if if then you were going to to speak and say you know uh i really was working on this project alone because my partner didn't cooperate you will confuse us because you do not know the word cooperate the word that we should know is cooperate okay so that is so you so you realize that this hyphen here it really helps us to pronounce this word okay then when we pronounce it we can say please co 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 operate okay because without this hyphen it was going to be cooperate what's that what's cooperate hmm? what's cooperate I'm, I'm i am pretty sure that such a word doesn't exist yes then second example co-author okay yes you'll see the hyphen helps us to pronounce this word is co-author okay so can you imagine if this hyphen wasn't there what what is this word gonna be kutha kotha kutha kotha katha what you know so it was really going to confuse us to pronounce it okay therefore it was good for us to really use a hyphen to help us to pronounce this word okay and i think you, you you'll also see even in your dictionaries that when you look for a certain word when where they show you how to pronounce the word they use hyphens okay so what where they show you where to pronounce a word in, in, in your dictionary, please go check it, please go check it out. Open, open up your dictionary, look for any word, open the dictionary and you will see that after they show you that word, they will show you how to pronounce that word. And where they show you how to pronounce the word, you, you will have higher fence there to show you how the word is pronounced. If maybe you want to pronounce the word trade, it will say kr hyphen e hyphen aid, you know, something like that to show you, to try to help you how to pronounce the certain word okay so a hyphen is also used to separate syllables of a word especially at the end of a newspaper article or a newspaper column here's an example there they looked everywhere for it they looked everywhere for it they forgot that it was in Side. okay so you realize that is the hyphen so this so this hyphen it tells us that this in and this side is is actually one word but then but then these two but then these two but then the syllable in and the syllable side they have to be separated by this hyphen so that we can see that oh this word is actually inside okay and so because they ran out of space in this line and they and they really couldn't just leave out that space blank okay because remember they couldn't leave that blank okay because yeah because it was really going to create a problem if you have more than one space okay therefore it was good for them to just write one syllable then use a dash and write the other one okay yes that is another use for a hyphen a hyphen is also used at the end of a column when the word continues on the next line we can for this one you can use the same example again okay you see that um we use the hyphen there because this word inside continues on the next line i hope you're all together because this is the end of the lesson. Um, punctuation marks really, really, really are important, guys. Remember. So remember, uh, this is okay. I have two minutes. Let me use these two minutes to quickly recap that which we went through today. Okay. Remember, we we spoke about punctuation marks. Okay. I said the apostrophe is used for what? To show possession. To show possession okay to combine two words to form a single word apostrophes are used to shorten a longer word and apostrophes also used to mark the plurals of individual characters and we also talked about an ellipsis that it is used to show that a section or a sentence has been left out intentionally okay and we also said an ellipsis is used to show an unfinished thought uh, the issue with capital letters, begin a word with it, use it for acronyms. You begin a sentence with a capital letter, you use a capital letter for proper nouns and so well for abbreviations and acronyms. And you use a hyphen to create compound words 
and a hyphen also helps us to pronounce words. And it also helps us to separate a word into two syllables when we do not have a space, when the word continues on the next line, okay? So punctuation is very important. So for, this, for today's lesson, there is no homework. I hope you are happy. Anyway, please go through this lesson again. All these punctuation marks, they are important. You are going to meet them next week in your assessment one way or the other. I hope you all, I hope you have all enjoyed today's lesson. Thank you so much for your questions, for your comments, for everything. Remember, if you have any questions, there is my email there in red, or you can email them digital school at africateamgeeks.co.za. Yes, remember to wash your hands, to sanitize your hands, stay home, uh, stay safe. If you go outside, please wear your mask and remember social distancing. So from all of us here at STEM Digital School, we love you. We say goodbye, take care, keep well, and let's meet again tomorrow. Same time, same place. Bye-bye.